Hey guys, it's Crystal and the S20 is official. There's actually three of them, so I'm gonna break those down, talk about the differences, and some quick impressions from my first day with them. Also, I'm really excited because I should have one of these to unbox really soon, so drop a like if you're excited to see that, and subscribe so you don't miss when it happens. So unlike last year, there's no budget version of the phone, so no S20e. This year's lineup does include though the S20, the S20+, Plus, and the insane S20 Ultra. Apart from cameras, the biggest differences with these is gonna be the screen size and battery capacity going from smallest to largest. We got the S20 with a 6.2 inch display and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. S20 Plus has a 6.7 inch display and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And the S20 Ultra with the biggest screen at 6.9 inches and a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, while the screen sizes may be different, what is really cool though is that they all share the same super fast 120 hertz refresh rate. You'll see the biggest advantage to something like this when you're swiping, navigating, potentially gaming. It is worth noting though, by default it's set to 60 hertz, so you'll have to go into settings and change it to 120 to get the most out of your display. Either way, it is really cool that all three phones share that same feature, and by now you should start to see a theme with that S20 name, Samsung really went all out. Speaking of features that all three of these share, they're all 5G across the board. Last year, we had a separate unicorn 5G model of the phone, and yeah, while 5G is not truly here yet, it's nice that all phones have it and there's not some special version of your phone that comes out months later. Now, what could be the craziest feature that all three of these phones share is 8K video recording. I just dropped a video in 5K and I thought it looked pretty good, but the fact that Samsung dropped 8K in their phones is wild. Also, it looks like you can stream that 8K footage that you shot on your phone onto their 8K TVs, trying to build that ecosystem. But overall, I'm really excited to check it out. Apparently, stabilization is supposed to be a lot better too. So if you guys wanna see an 8K video shot on the S20, leave a comment down below. Now, where they do differ though is when it comes to cameras, and it definitely gets a little crazy here, but to break it down as simply as I can for now, the S20 packs three cameras and tops out at 64 megapixels. The S20 Plus is the same, but it has a fourth camera that's actually a depth sensor, so you're gonna get better portrait shots. And the crazy S20 Ultra tops out at 108 megapixels with a ridiculous 100 times zoom. 108 megapixels and 100 times zoom, that's pretty freaking crazy. Now, I really wanna spend a lot more time with these cameras, so if you guys wanna see anything covered in the review, let me know. But it's safe to say Samsung really came after everybody this year. They also all pack 12 gigs of RAM, and you can even go up to 16 if you max out the Ultra, which is pretty crazy. And yeah, these phones are definitely on the pricier side, but it kind of seems like Samsung is maybe leaving the budget stuff to OnePlus and just embraced going all out. 8K video recording, crazy cameras, massive batteries, 120 hertz refresh rate, and you pair that with the already beautiful display. I don't know, man, kind of sounds like the all around perfect phone. I would love to hear what you guys think though. Is the Ultra too Ultra, too crazy? What was your favorite feature? Are you picking one up? And again, definitely stay tuned for the full review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.